and welcome to Community Link. My name is Christian Hoffman. I'm the Vice President for Public Relations and Development at Community Missions. And Community Link here is Community Missions' opportunity to talk a little bit about our programs and how we serve the community and how you out in the community can help us to do just that. Um, I'm joined today by Shauna Dumfrey, who works in our Choices Administrator, uh, sorry, our Choices Intake program and uh, we'll get to speaking with her in just a moment. I uh, did want to fill you in on a couple of different things that we have going on at Community Missions. First off, just a couple of weeks ago on March 1st, we had our 27th annual Sweetheart Dinner. Uh, Sweetheart Dinner is always a fun time and this uh, this year once again lived up to just that. We had over 120 baskets thanks to many of you out in the community for donating those and small business owners and even large business owners for donating gift cards and baskets and some other some silent auction items. So thank you so much for those donations. Thank you, of course, to all of our sponsors as well that came out and helped us or in so many different ways in supporting uh, all that we were doing. And then, of course, all to all the attendees as well. So many of you uh, came out, over 250 attendees that were able to make it out on a nice, uh, relatively uh, quiet Friday evening. Typically, Friday evenings that we choose for Sweetheart Dinner have uh, snow sideways or rain or something like that, but we chose a good date this year, many months in advance. So thank you so much for everyone uh, for pulling all of that for us being able to pull all of those different uh, ways that you can support us together. And we raised over $30,000 for our crisis and community services, which is very exciting for us. The things that we talk about so often here, like our uh, our crisis housing, our community kitchen, our soup kitchen, uh, the soup kitchen, um, the food pantry, the clothes closet, all of those different programs operate because of uh, fundraisers and giving uh, that you all are providing us with out in the community. So thank you so much for that. Uh, we don't have a date for the next one yet, but we'll be celebrating our 100th anniversary. Hard to wrap our heads around that Community Missions has been part of the Niagara Falls and Niagara County community for 100 years as of uh, next year. So we'll be looking to celebrate in some new and different ways uh, next year. So some Somewhere around March or so of next year, we'll be looking forward to holding our next Sweetheart Dinner. So our next fundraising event, though, is on the calendars now. So that is on Monday, July 29th, and that is going to be our Par 4 Mission Golf Classic. That is going to be held at Niagara Frontier Golf Club. Once again, we have 144 spots, so 36 foursomes, and none of them are spoken for yet, so we're hoping that you will uh, mark your calendar, save the date for now, and we'll be putting out some sponsorship and registration information here shortly about that really fun day as well. So another fundraiser for our crisis and community services. We hope that you'll join us on what is just a beautiful course out in Youngstown, a private course that you don't get to play very often. And here's an opportunity to do just that. So again, Monday, July 29th, we'll hold our Par 4 Mission Golf Classic uh, in Youngstown to help raise money uh, for our crisis and community services. Just a couple of other items very quickly um, that we are looking for donations of, and those are going to be um, certainly furniture items. We can do pickups uh, again of those uh, items throughout Niagara County so please call us at 285-3403 if you've got some furniture that you'd like to donate and can, uh, would be able to help out somebody in need at that point and then we also are in need of some basics uh, for people while they're in the shelter and then also as they move out of the shelter so things like hygiene products uh, linens and towels are always in need and then pots and pans uh, if you would be able to purchase some of those items new for us that would be wonderful if you have some stuff that's really good in really good shape but it's been used for a little bit we can take those as well uh, those types of items can be dropped off at our main site 1570 buffalo avenue at any point um, 24 hours a day seven days a week uh, somebody is always there to be able to take in those donations um, so again, we thank you all so much for all that you're doing to support those that we're serving out in the community. And now I'd like to turn my attention over to Shauna Dumfrey. Thanks so much for joining me today. Nice to be here. Thank you. Wonderful. So, uh, so this is not your first time here uh, doing this and talking a little bit about what it is that you do mm -hmm. uh, in trying to make sure that uh, all of our different programs, as far as our residential uh, programs for individuals with mental health, um, have people in them and there is no shortage out in the community of people in need of those services. Correct. So why don't you talk a little bit about in general what the residential programs are and uh, what are the kind of differences between them? 
Okay. So we have two community residents, and those are group living. There's one in North Tonawanda. It is 12 beds. It's double occupancy in those rooms. Um, there is one in Niagara Falls. It's called Hanson House. That is 10 beds, and that is single rooms. Um, both of those programs have medication rooms, so we can assist with medications. Um, we have uh, staff there 24 hours a day for support. Um, they do have to work on restorative services. So what I do try to emphasize to people is it is a program, which means that you do when you come in, there are certain obligations, and that is one of them. They have to be willing to meet with staff six times every month for 15 minutes to work on those goals. And they're it's a transitional, both facilities. So we're just trying to get them to a more independent level of care. Um, within those programs, we do ask that they engage with their mental health treatment. Uh, if they do have substance use issues, that they do remain sober and be in outpatient treatment. Um, there is also a day program or volunteer component, so they have some kind of day activity during the weekdays. Um, the intermediate level is called the Treatment Apartment Program. That's in uh, Niagara Falls on Cleveland Avenue, and that is an apartment program. Um, all the same things apply in terms of having a medication room, um, working on restorative services, uh, you know, being engaged with your mental health treatment, you know, working on your sobriety if that's a concern for you. Um, the only difference is, is the staff there act more as case managers. That's kind of how I present it when I talk to new referrals. Um, and they're only there from 7 in the morning till 11 at night. So, you know, you call them, you might uh, set up an appointment to meet with them or them with you. Um, it's not like the group home living where, you know, the staff are right there kind of integrated with the, the folks living. The last one is a subsidized program, and that is called supportive housing. And that's for the most independent people, and they get an apartment in the Niagara County area. We subsidize their rent, and we provide them with limited case management. So they have to be able to allow that person to come in once a month to check on their well-being, the condition of their apartment, and receive two phone calls. Great. So um, you mentioned kind of where those places are at, so Niagara Falls, North Tonawanda, mm -hmm. and then, you know, kind of throughout the county. So is that only available to people that are living here in Niagara County? No, we get referrals from out of county all the time. Okay. Um, oftentimes those people are usually in some kind of treatment. Um, it's really, uh, it's, that just kind of really becomes a funding issue because sometimes if people have uh, Department of Social Services funding with another county, oftentimes those counties won't pay for mental health housing when there's a switch in providers. So we just have to make sure that those counties are willing to, to do that. But we do get referrals from really all over New York State. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so who makes sense for some of these different programs? Um, what, what's admission look like? So for the community residents, those are really the people in the community that are struggling the most. Maybe they're really not managing their symptoms well and they need to work on coping skills. Maybe they're not taking their medications appropriately um, and we can help them with that and teach them about their medications and how to take them. Um, maybe their daily living skills aren't, aren't you know, good. Maybe they need some assistance and guidance with hygiene or cleaning or things like that. So that would be the people that would, again, be most struggling in the community. The intermediate one, they have gained those independent living skills, but they're still in a place where they still need to build some things like coping skills. That's a big thing to learn how to manage their mental health because oftentimes they may be in the community and they're not managing it, and that has caused them problems from living independently like or make, maybe taking medications. So, um, but they have typically more independent living skills. So, you know, they may be able to set up their own Medicaid cabs, make appointments, you know, deal with their finances. Um, clean, they have to be able to clean their apartments because we don't assist with that. They have to be able to uh, cook independently and safely. And then supportive housing, like I said, is the most independent living. So they really have to be able to do all of those things in the community. It's really more of a financial support. And then the case managers are really there to act as liaison between, between them and the landlords or set them up with linkages they don't necessarily have. Okay. And what... Are there, are there certain age brackets that people need to be in? So we serve anybody over the age of 18. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, 
a mental illness, uh, mentally ill diagnosis. So yeah. what are some examples of what that could be for someone? So depression, anxiety, uh, schizophrenia, um, bipolar, um, PTSD, I'm trying to think of it. Those are really the most common ones that we typically uh, see in our referrals. I mean, there's a variety of other ones, but those are pretty typical so, diagnosis. So three different types of programs, kind of, um, do people move between them sometimes? Or if you realize that you move into one and it doesn't make sense, can they move between the different ones? Or? They do that okay. all the time. Okay. Yeah, we've had people go from our community residence into our TAP program and into the community into our supportive housing. Mm -hmm. We've actually had quite a few people. Um, typically, once they hit the TAP program, which is the um, uh, apartment program, they uh, that's kind of one of their goals is to get into supportive our supportive housing. Okay. So yeah, we have movement, and you know sometimes we do have movement uh, into more intense levels. So say for instance they've been in a TAP program and they're just really struggling, and they just need a little bit more support. They could potentially go back into a community residence mm -hmm. to help build those skills. Mm -hmm. And then TAP, there's an on-site and an off-site component, is that right? Correct, yep. Okay. So um, the off-site is a little bit more independent, a little less staff uh, contact, and it is um, apartments in the community of just Niagara Falls, where we have deals with landlords and we rent entire houses with apartments in them. So they still get all the benefits of the TAP program on site, but again, they don't get quite as much staff contact just because they're more in the community. So they do have to demonstrate a few more uh, daily living skills than those living on site. Okay, great. Um, if somebody hears this and has some questions or maybe would be interested, how do they contact you? So they can call me at my office. My number is 716-285-3403. My extension is 2275. I am the intake administrator. Um, if they want to apply, they can apply through the Niagara County SPOA application. That is both on our website through services, mental health housing. You'll see all the different types of programs there. There are vir virtual tours of our community mm -hmm. residents and our TAP program. And in embedded in that is the SPOA. Um, you can also go on the Niagara County Department of Mental Health website under SPOA, and there's also an application there. Great. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the virtual tours. You know, we spent some time around COVID, I want to say, yeah, about that. And those did. are really useful. Those are really, really They've well done great. tours. Yeah. That people can get a really good sense as to what, you know, each of the different programs are, what makes them different. Um, so certainly would encourage people to utilize those. Yep. So you mentioned two different community residences, mm -hmm. um, one in North Tonawanda, one in Niagara Falls. Is that the only difference between the two, basically? Yeah, they're exactly the same program. Again, though, I do want to stress, in um, Niagara Falls, they are single bedrooms, mm -hmm. where the ones in uh, North Tonawanda are double occupancy. So you'll be teamed up with a, another same-sex person. So sure. you have to be willing to have a roommate. I also want to mention that at the TAP program on site, in many of the off-site apartments, you also do have a roommate within the apartment. Okay. I mean, you have your own locking bedroom, so you do have a private space, but you do uh, live in the communal area with another person. Gotcha, yeah, so, so again, that can make some sense for people, and that could be a deterrent, I would think, for some mm -hmm. people as well, so good to, good to be upfront about that. Yep. So what does a day look like um, for somebody in each of the different programs, and what, what is, how does that differ? So for community residents during the weekday, um, typically they would get up, take medications by eight o'clock if they don't have to be out to a day program, and then be transported probably to a day program and may have, maybe a volunteer opportunity and work and, and be involved in that, say, for, I don't know, maybe till one, two, maybe three o'clock, depending on what they're engaged in. We do have quite a few day programs within Niagara mm -hmm. County that they can be 